Hi D. Now here's what's happening with your image. Uh, basically, you have too much tungsten and too little strobe. So here's the deal. You make your uh, movement exposure with uh, the use of your tungsten light. Uh, you bring in tungsten light by slowing down your shutter speed. With the strobe light, shutter speed doesn't matter as long as the light synchronizes with the given shutter speed. So, so for example, uh, for most cameras, if you go, if your shutter speed is faster than one two hundredth of a second, one two hundred fiftieth of a second max, you're going to get like a black <coughs> black shadow across your frame. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, any other shutter speed that's slower than that, it it really doesn't matter. Now, as you slow your shutter speed down, you let in more ambient light, or in this case, your ambient light is your tungsten light. By ambient, I mean the existing continuous light. Your strobe light freezes the motion. So by, the, by a combination of strobe light and a certain kind of shutter speed, you have a little bit of solid, and then you have some movement. Let me show you some example. Here you have tumbling dice. So in this case, um, the shutter speed, uh, the strobe stopped the dice, froze it, and then the slow shutter speed allowed movement to show. Now, whether this is front curtain synchronization or rear curtain, um, it depends on the camera. Now, the man in the video had uh, front curtain synchronization. I gotta wait for these belts to stop ringing or they're driving me nuts. The church bells are right next door. Um, okay, finish up. Okay. <laughs> okay, D. So, uh, in this case, um, the slow shutter speed burned in the movement of the dice. Uh, and I was talking about the man in the video. He had front curtain sy synchronization. So, he had a battery operated car or remote operated car. And as he began to move it, he first popped the strobe and then the car moved. And that motion was burned in by the tungsten light probably roughly by an eighth of a second. Now because he had front curtain synchronization, he had to move the car backwards to emulate the car movement. So the, he popped the strobe and the images, the solid image appears, then the car moved backwards and the movement was burned in. So when you look at the photograph, it looks like the car was moving forward. You understand? That's front curtain synchronization because the strobe pops right as the shutter opens. Now, rear curtain synchronization, here's an example of rear curtain synchronization, the runner. See this blurred baton? They're passing the baton. Here, the curtain opens, and the movement, the blurred movement is burned in, and then the strobe is popped as the shutter is about to close. Here's the strobe freezing the motion of the runner. So, here, it's just the shutter being open, period. No strobe is involved. Uh, somebody took a candle and walked around the subject and the shutter was just remained open the whole time. Maybe it was three seconds, maybe five seconds, maybe ten seconds. Look how there's lighting on both sides of his faces, uh, on both sides of his face. So this is just the shutter being open, nothing else. So you have to find that ideal combination of shutter, shutter speed and strobe. So for example, uh, I'll write the rest of it down in the discussion area. Uh, okay, so I'll talk to you next time, D. I hope this helps.